Thank you very much. Um, I'm so honored to be here talking to you all. Um, I don't exactly have a speech prepared, so I'm just going to read a couple poems and just talk about how I came to be where I am. So, and the title of this poem is called Salt. Tell me a story that hints nothing of the unspoken cruelty of miracles, nothing of children who trust fathers, who worship gods that ask too much of them. Tell me a story where Lot's wife turns and finds her name and the open arms of all her people, and every goodbye is a warm breath pressed into a mirror, transient and forgiving. Tell me what to do with hands that claim so thirstily, weaving bodies into unmistakable nettles of regret. Give me a tale, true or not, in which we speak of our dreams and do not mean all we have forsaken for it. What little is left, what will be expected to burn on this makeshift altar of choice? Not knowing how to say no is so much different from suggesting that I mean yes. I want this, please continue. I guess he didn't want to be rejected, so he never bothered asking. You tell me I have to believe in something, so I invent a version of the story where there is no need for purity or obedience, where God so loved the world, he was perfectly content to watch little Mary grow. And this next poem is, this next poem is titled, Sometimes I am my father's daughter, but mostly I am his hand. Yes, I too have been left cradling what silence does to the body. My thong, a small animal trapped in a forest of teeth, able to demand only what has not been given freely, and like a song on loop, memory goes crashing into itself. I remember the smoke, the smell of burning grass cleansing the air, stretched out before me like an entire forest of wind. I remember his voice cutting through the heat to find me, and his hands that wouldn't let go when he did, the only story where he is too afraid to be anything else. I have been too afraid to be anything else. A group of otters is called a family. No one can say for certain what that means. Family, not otters. I have come home humble as rain. I have come home wild and vindictive as the sea. I have stolen food from the mouths of lovers when I only meant to feed myself. The truth is, I am without grandparents, and I fear what void must come next. Funny how death forces us to forsake our best pretenses. Say my name and a shadow appears in the doorway. Say baby and a dam folds in on itself. Say thanks, say thanks. Say you're sorry even if you don't want to. In my worst dreams, I am still trapped in childhood's tomb. I wake to the noise of sand being shoveled in. The past, a stray dog that keeps returning with a new bruise. How do I admit I almost love the dog? I mean the bruise or maybe the smoke. I have not known love beyond a need to punish someone else for my foolish desires. And isn't it funny how forgiveness does not erase that which it forgives? Can you hear me? I am pretending as though I could bridge this distance and you could understand. There are worse histories than this, I know. I had warm clothes and food no one had to be traded for. The truth is, my father loved to build things. My father loved to break things. I cannot remember the last time I made something with my hands. I keep trying to tell you about the fire. My father came running to find me. Thank you. Okay, so as to how I came to be where I am, like all of you, I went through the, or like most of you, I went through the Nigerian educational system and that means you basically did, a lot of us didn't exactly go to school to study what we taught us our passions. 
if you are interested in music, you didn't go to school to study music, your parents wouldn't allow it. If you are interested in being an actor, you didn't go to school to study that. It was for a lot of people who ended up in those curses, it was either because they were so resilient they could fight against their parents' wishes or you know, they got thrown there as a substitute for something else that they wanted. I did get to study what I wanted, which was law, but somewhere around 300 level, I figured this isn't what I wanted to do with my life. It's just not me. The Nigerian law system is broken, is disheartening, cases take so long to get anywhere, and, I was, and lawyers are paid a paltry sum of money. And so I started to write, and that's how I got into copywriting. And I was making you know, some extra money while in school, and then I graduated, and I realized, you know what? I could actually make a living out of this. And that's what I've been doing for a long, long time. And I'm, I can say that I'm, as a content writer, a content marketer, I, you know, I'm earning uh, considerable, considerably above you know, the average Nigerian person. And um, I can't imagine that I would be able to do the things that I do now, or that I'll have the chances to you know, tell the stories that I'm telling if I had just stayed focused on that law path and just after school, you know, gone to law school, gone to a firm, started serving, but I realized that I could do so much more. I could do something else with my time, something that I actually found rewarding to a degree. And even if you're not necessarily writing to earn money, even if you're not you know, necessarily writing to earn a living, you can just write because you want to tell stories. And that's actually what I also do in you know, my personal writing. I don't necessarily make a lot of money from that. It's just a commission here, a commission there. But I still enjoy it. It's the thing that brings me you know, some of the most comfort, some of the most joy in the world. I write. And lately, the Nigerian and even the African canon of literature has been expanding. It's bigger, or it's maybe not bigger, but it's more popular than ever before. A lot of young people my age are writing. They are proud to say, oh my god, I'm a writer. It's no longer a thing of, you know, please don't say it outside, you're not serious. It's actually something we're proud to say that, oh, I'm a writer, I write poems, I write essays, I write... And they are actually doing really good, and they're actually earning a lot of recognition for like the people on the continent right now. And while representation is not exactly where it needs to be, the people who are doing the work right now are actually holding the torch, you know, they're keeping the door open, they're saying, if you have a story that you want to tell, if you have a story that you, people don't want you to tell, if you have a story that you think the world deserves to know, if you have a story that has somehow managed to keep you alive till now, because I believe that if I wasn't writing poetry, I may not be here right now because, you know, poetry has really helped me overcome a lot of, you know, the anxiety, a lot of the depression, a lot of the struggles that I've had to go through as a young adult. And if you are in that position, if you think that you have a story to tell, you can write for yourself, you can write for other people, it doesn't really matter. What matters is your willingness to throw your voice into the fold, your willingness to put pen to paper, your willingness to tell a story that you think someone else out there, even if it's just one person, even if it's a dozen people, it doesn't matter whether you win awards, it doesn't matter whether you don't win awards, what matters is that you're writing, what matters is that you're telling important stories, stories that are relevant to you and to other people, and I believe that as long as we keep doing that, that every time someone writes a new story, every time someone tells an old story in a different way, the world becomes a better, more interesting place.